Hello and welcome to example sheet 2 question 4. In this particular question we are looking at a heat pump. You can find more information on heat pumps and background reading in page 622 in the recommended textbooks Thermodynamics and Engineering Approach by Sengel and Bowles. I'd recommend you look that up because it's very, in, uh, it's really, really interesting stuff in there and it'll help with the question. Um, moving on, uh, simple, simple thing really. Um, refrigerant 134A again. Um, heats a house by underground water at 8 degrees C. So this is our cold environment. So you've got 8 degrees C, which is there into our heat pump and of course this is QL heat removed from the cold space and heat now is not rejected to the environment this heat is actually put into our house um, but it's important to note that the rate of heat lost from the house is given as 60,000 kilojoules per hour and of course our heat pump is powered so W in net. Okay so it's in a cycle, uh, the fluid is first going to enter the compressor um, then enter the condenser before expansion valve for throttling 0.3 and finally into the evaporator before repeating the cycle, um, we know that at point one and entry to the compressor, we've got 280 kPa and 0 degrees C given there. And it leaves that compressor at point two at one megapascal and 60 degrees C there. And finally, it exits the condenser at 30 degrees which is shown there, which is at point 0.3. What we've been asked to do is the power input to the heat pump. So we're interested in finding this W net in here. Um, if I quickly draw this on a TS diagram for you, um, you're going to see there's point 0.1. Uh, before entering the compressor, the temperature is going to increase and entry is going to increase slightly as well. But you also... If Important to note that there's a 2S, there is an isentropic point there as well. Um, finally, then it is going to pass through the condenser down temperature and entropy is decreasing down to 0.3, where it exits the condenser, uh, returning to 0.4 as its throttling temperature is reducing, and finally returning 0.3. Or return into point one, of course. QL, this is the point where heat's rejected, uh, removed from the cold space. Heat's then put into the house, QH, and of course, the work for the compressor is points one to two. And fill in some of the known values we have here. Okay, so we're interested in finding the power input to the heat pump. So if you recall this equation, W in equal to mass flow rate H2A minus, so that's the actual value of F, F, enthalpy at point 0.2. Um, so in order to do this, we need to find the value H2, H1, and the mass flow rate. Uh, so we know at point, point 0.1, we know that the pressure is equal to 280 kPa, and temperature is equal to 0 degrees C. Using table A12 you'll see that T saturated at this pressure is equal to minus 1.25 degrees C which is therefore lower than T1 of 0 degrees C. Because the temperature of the refrigerant is higher than the saturation temperature for the given pressure at point 0.1 it is in the superheated region, so we need to use the R134A superheated table A13. And what you'll find by looking this up is that H1 is equal to 250 
0.83 kilojoules per kg. Now you may be considering finding S1, however since this process is the actual vapour compression cycle, not ideal, and the pressure and temp values at pre are given, S1 is not required to find W in. S1 and hence S2S are needed if attempting to find the isentropic efficiency of the compressor and I'll cover this at the end of the video. Okay, so having found H1, um, we're now interested in finding H2. So at point 2, we know that temp temperature 2 is equal to 60 degrees C and pressure at 2 is equal to 1 megapascal. Um, based on this, the T saturation value is 39.37 degrees C and therefore T2 is greater than T sat. So therefore it's superheated so again we want to be using table A13 and what you'll find is that H2 is equal to 293.38 kilojoules per kg. We haven't been given the volume flow rate but we do know QH the heat loss to the environment so if you look at points 2 to 3 can actually pull the equation QH is equal to M mass flow rate H2 minus H3 so we are interested in finding this we are given this we've just calculated H2 but we also need to find H3 so that when we rearrange this equation we can quite easily find the mass flow rate H2 minus H3 now we know that because process 2 to 3 is condensing, the pressure will be constant. So therefore, at point 3, pressure 3 is equal to pressure 2, which is equal to 1 megapascal. And we're told that the temperature is equal to 30 degrees C. So, get at this pressure, T saturation is equal to 39.37 degree C, therefore T saturation is greater than T3 and the refrigerant is in the fluid region so therefore H3 is equal to HF at temperature 3 given equal to 93.58 kilojoules per kg since now we've got the values that we need um, we can quite simply find the mass flow rate which is equal to, and don't forget to convert this into seconds from hours, and since that will give you a mass flow rate of equal to 0 0.0834. Now looking back at this equation here, you'll see that we have the values that we're interested in. So W in can quite easily be calculated, which equals 3.55 kilowatts. Okay, so we're interested in B, the rate of heat absorption from the water. So this is QL that we're interested in happening between points 1 and 4. What you'll find is QL is equal to mass flow rate H1 minus H4. And we've previously calculated the mass flow rate. It's also important to note that process 3 to 4 is isenthalpic, so therefore h3 is equal to h4 so we now have all of the values that we require so it's just a simple calculation and the answer to b is 13.11 kilowatts heat removed from the cold water okay looking at part c now the increase in electric power input if an electric resistance heater is used instead of a heat pump Okay, so WE is equal to QH, um, which is equal to 60,000 divided by 0.600, which is equal to 16.67 kilowatt. So the W increase required if an electric heater was used instead. is equal to WE minus WN which is equal to 16.67 minus 
which is equal to 15.12 kilowatts. Okay, so we've found the answers to parts A, B, and C. Um, now just an additional thing to look at. I mentioned earlier, uh, you could be asked to find the isentropic efficiency of the compressor. So I'm just briefly going to run through how you would do that. So if we recall the equation for n comp efficiency is equal to H2S minus H1 over H2A minus H1. Now, of course, this is what we're interested in. We've got H1 previously calculated and H2A is previously calculated. So we need to find H2S and we'll have be able to calculate quite easily what we're looking for. H1 is equal to 250.83 kilojoules per kg and S1, which you can find from the table, is 0.9362 kilojoules per kg. Now remember S1 is equal to S2S since this price this is isentropic compression and entropy remains constant and at point two the pressure is equal to one megapascal. Therefore we can quite easily use interpolation to find the value of enthalpy for H2S. Um, Interpolation has been covered in previous videos using the equation. And you'll find when you sub these values into the equation that H2S is equal to 277.54 kilojoules per kg. And the end compressor then, when you sub these values in, because we've now found this, is a simple calculation. And you'll find n comp to be equal to 0 0.6277 or 62.8%.